Uh, my name is Nick Ockney. I'm Chase Semenek. And we are here to present Beyond the Burn, unveiling the extensive impacts of wildfires in the United States. Did you know that wildfires have killed more Americans in the last 20 years than foreign terrorist attacks? We often see wildfires in the news, and they're often portrayed as monstrous uh, killers. And this can be the case sometimes, but other times, wildfires can be very beneficial to fostering a healthy forest. We need Americans to understand this, that fire is natural and can be beneficial. Recently, wildfires have been damaging to our communities, our people, our ecosystems, and our economies. And without proper government funding and personnel addressing the issue of wildfires, it will ever worsen. Many seemingly harmless things can often turn chaotic in terms of wildfires. Take this campfire, for example. I'm sure many of you have enjoyed a campfire with your friends and family. But what you, what you may not understand is a campfire just like this can create a scene like this in a matter of a few days. This is a photo of the Sobrenes Fire in California, which burned over 130,000 acres of forest, which is over twice the size of Boston. This is important to understand because this is not very uncommon. And while this is one of the most severe in recent memory, it happened, fires like this happen annually as 85% of wildfires are caused by humans. Whether this is equipment misuse, burning debris, just throwing a cigarette on the ground after you're done smoking it, um, or campfires just like this. It, fires can start very easily and obviously they can spread very rapidly. Campaigns like Smokey the Bear here, like many of you have seen, I'm sure, do a decent job of creating uh, knowledge about wildfires and wildfire safety, but it really has not done a good enough job as 62,000 wildfires annually and 7 million acres burned annually does not really show much of a decrease in wildfires. Now, for the other 15% of how wildfires are caused, uh, nature plays a big role in that. Uh, lightning is the leading cause of nature-caused wildfires with over 6,000 fires st starting by lightning every year. Um, and there's often a stigma around wildfires that they're very always, they're always bad and they always need to be put out immediately. And while this can be the case for some near residential areas, it is also imperative that we let some burn. This is because the more you put out a wildfire instantly and not let it burn, the more fuel will build up in an area. And the more fuel there is in an area uh, during the right conditions, a wildfire can truly spread and be the most severe. We've seen in recent memory like the Sobranius fire I mentioned earlier. Now, there is effort, a lot of efforts to uh, lessen the impacts of wildfires. Um, one example is prescribed burns, which I'll mention later, but also there is uh, a method that firefighters use, which is just enabling, I don't know why this is doing this, which is enabling conservation efforts, like planting trees, uh, adding more native species into the land, and um, also, yeah, more, more stuff like that. And so this is a photo of a house in the Sierra foothills of California. I don't know why this is keep doing this, sorry. These, these houses continually continue to be burnt as they are built more and more every year into fire prone areas. Now this is a problem especially in California as so many houses have been burnt down that fire insurance companies actually don't offer fire insurance to many homes in California just because they lose so much money every year. And this is a problem not only for builders who we can maybe attribute their building of these homes to greed or ignorance because the same thing happens over and over. But Humans are losing their most valuable asset along with memories that they will never get back and items they'll never get back. And so this can displace many people. As you can see here, here's a photo of another home burning up. But it's not just a few people who are displaced by these fires. As you can see here, um, is a before and after of an entire community which was just completely ravished by a wildfire. And all these people had to find new homes, had to go somewhere else along with over 100 people dying in this fire. And it's not even just the fire that kills people. As you can see here, the smoke up here is actually the most deadly factor of a wildfire. And it leads to thousands more deaths, even though they can't necessarily mark it as a wildfire death, it's, this causes many. And one way we thought that we could eliminate this problem is in other countries, they do something similar with like a mask mandate uh, with air pollution. And we thought that we could do that around here which could definitely limit the deaths of people. 
And now here is a photo of two deer in a river watching their home be burnt up. Now this is a problem throughout the entire country with wildfires as animal displacement is very high and a lot of predators come into areas that are burnt down and kill all the prey. And this leads to a predator-prey imbalance, which is obviously something that we don't want. And there are efforts that have been made to reduce this, as I said previously, conservation efforts, planting new trees, in introducing native species, getting rid of invasive species. But at the end, it's, it is definitely a problem, but the worst problem is for cattle and livestock because during wildfires where a farmer has to evacuate their land and save themselves, the cattle don't really have anywhere to go as they're fenced in and they usually just die, perish sadly. And this is obviously a, a loss to the animals' lives, but also a big financial loss to farmers. Now, one method that people have been using for a long time, the most important method, is prescribed burns. These are in maintained and controlled burns where they dig a trench around an area and then set it ablaze to kind of reset the fuel storage in a forest area. But these can turn south quickly, and even experts who light these fires, it can really harm them. Here's an example. Um, this was burned over 150,000 acres of forest, and this was a, a fire that was set specifically by an expert group of wildland firefighters. But the wind was blowing, and they couldn't control it, and it really kind of got out of their reach. So more often than not, we see a relationship between wildfires and climate change. Uh, over the past four decades, surprisingly, the number of wildfires has decreased, but the size of the fires that we do see have greatly increased. Um, this is due to prevention met methods as well as climate change. So as Chase said, when we put out wildfires, that builds up fuel, which makes fires larger and more devastating. And also climate change, of course, climate change is, uh, causes areas to become hotter and create more fuel and just make weather and patterns more unpredictable. Um, <clears throat> so all, when wildfires burn, they release carbon dioxide as well as aerosols called black carbon, which is like what the actual smoke is. It's many particles of carbon. So wildfires release these uh, forms of carbon, and that fuels climate change. And in return, climate change fuels wildfires. So this is a, this is a cycle that doesn't appear to have any end to it, and it's continuously getting worse. And also, when wildfires burn, as I mentioned, there's the black carbon in the air. And so this is in our air, and it must come down at some point. So this is a glacier in the Himalayan mountains, and it's shown that this is all this black stuff on this glacier. It actually propels the melting of these glaciers because the black, uh, the black carbon attracts the sunlight and it melts the glaciers quicker. So by the year 2100, uh, 400 million people will be displaced by rising sea levels, so that's another way that wildfires uh, affect humans. <coughs> so now we get to who actually fights these fires. These are called wildland firefighters, and they're normal firefighters, but they're not at the same time because they work outdoors every day, and so these guys have to walk a lot. It's a very physically and mentally demanding job. They're carrying all their gear, which includes chainsaws and backpacks and such, and they have to walk all the way up to that wildfire just to have any chance at stopping it. And whether you're digging trenches with your hands or you're cutting down trees with your chainsaws, every single wildfire has to face wildfire smoke, which is the biggest issue in the industry, as Chase mentioned. We interviewed a professor from the University of Maryland named Mark Cochrane, and he has 30 years' experience fighting wildfires in the field, and he testified that the biggest issue is the smoke because, as you can see here, it gets in your eyes and you breathe it into your lungs, and it, he said it can uh, seal your eyes shut and it can make it very hard to breathe. And there's also many long-term health effects that come with this um, because the smoke is so damaging to your insides that many people uh, who fight wildfires retire early because they understand that the demands of the job just aren't worth it. And many people would assume that the pay that wildfire uh, firefighters get for fighting the wildfires is very large because their job is so demanding. On average, uh, California's firefighters get $34,000 a year of pay, which is many people don't see worth it, and that's why we're seeing such a struggle to find people to fight the wildfires. So we think that the government must raise pay and benefits to these wildland firefighters in order to see more people join the field and protect 
the citizens. Uh, recently, there have been many technologies and organizations to assist these wildland firefighters in their efforts. Um, starting in the year around 1850 in the United States, many people began fighting wildfires, but they didn't have machines such as bulldozers, so they had to dig hand trenches to create fire lines. But now with the invention of uh, diesel and gasoline motors and hydraulic systems, we're able to create machines like this. To, uh, this bulldozer is creating a fire line, so this fire over here can't spread over here because he's making a big path of dirt so the fire won't jump. So we have bulldozers, excavators, um, skid steers, masticators, there's a bunch of things that we use now. We also use high capacity airplanes and helicopters to drop fire retardant and water on these fires. This is another way to make uh, fire lines to stop the fire from spreading uh, past like the red powder because it doesn't burn. And we also now use drones to these drones are mapping out this wildfire, but we also use drones to actually start prescribed burns that Chase was talking about. They can drop like little balls of fire to start prescribed burns, which is very cool. And now we have wildfire detection uh, programs up on our satellites now too, so we can locate wildfires from outer space. And also, if there's a wildfire headed towards a community, you can they have community alert systems, so they send it out to your cell phones. So now more communities will be safer than ever. But we're wondering if these, if these uh, technologies can keep up with the ever worsening issue of wildfires, and we're not sure. Uh, as you can probably tell, wildfires are very expensive to fight. There's 62,000 wildfires in the US every year. And as this graph shows, starting in 85, it was about $200 million to fight them, and now it's up way beyond. So uh, the Forest Service, uh, in 2025, their budget will be $8.9 billion, which is $500 million more than y this year. So that's a good increase, I suppose. But for comparison, NASA's budget in 2024 this year is $28 billion, which is about three times that of the Forest Service budget. And I think we can all agree that, you know, NASA's doing some good things studying the cosmos, but I think we definitely need to focus more on actual issues that are, like, affecting humans and are dangerous to humans than things that are out of this world, literally, because they're in outer space. Um, in 2023, the Maui fire, which was in Hawaii, I'm sure a lot of you saw it on the news, that made $5.5 billion in damage, which just shows the damage that a lot of these wildfires can do. So we think that more government uh, support and funding is necessary in order to promote safe communities. So some homeowners have developed ways to be proactive against these wildfires. If you're a homeowner, I'm sure you want your house to be safe. So many, wild, or many homeowners have developed ways to protect their homes. Most homes ignite from flying embers or small fires. So when a wildfire burns, it can have like small embers that are burning and they rise up into the air and they can travel with the wind about five miles away from the actual wildfire. And these small embers can get in your gutters, on your roof, in your vents, and also the small flames can travel on the grass and get in your vegetation and start your fence on fire. So homeowners have started putting wire mesh over their vents and they've started using metal roofing and they've started um, like clearing out their gutters regularly and they've also cleared vegetation and removed fencing from the side of their homes to protect their homes from the fires. Also, homeowners like clear trees from their property, so if a tree lights on fire, then it won't be in, within the vicinity of their home. So this is a home in California, and this is a wildfire safe home. So it looks just like a normal home, and there's only a couple thousand dollars worth of improvements in this home, so it looks like a normal home. It operates like a normal home, but this house is much more safe than a normal home versus wildfires. So I would highly suggest if anyone lives out west that they implement these uh, details into their home. And we both agree that government should start providing tax incentives for people who implement these measures because they end up saving so many so much money and many lives. And you know we've talked about so much of the bad about wildfires but we really want you guys to understand that there is hope. If the government can spend more money and add more funding into many things, it can really decrease all of these problems. Climate change, human death, loss of land, loss of houses, all of this can go down with just more funding. As, as Nick said previously, uh, increasing the wage of fi wildland firefighters will in turn make there be more of them because right, currently, right now, 
the risk is way too big for the reward as they're risking their lives every day for $34,000, which is obviously not enough. And also, if we continue to um, have conservation efforts like this, our forests will be able to recover and they, they will end up doing well and the wildfires eventually will subside. The more, the more awareness with fire campaigns we have uh, will cause less human cause of wildfires as how many campaigns have you guys seen besides Smokey the Bear about trying to prevent wildfires? Not many, I assume. And so this is obviously a problem and important because the more people that know about wildfire safety will create less wildfires. And we really hope that you all, you know, share with your family and friends some of this information you learned today, especially wildfire safety, because you never know one day it could actually prevent a wildfire. Now, Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which we can use to change the world. Thank you.